I was born in the late 80s, so my mom and dad, Oma Njilo and Gomani Sinjilo, I was a healthy baby boy. A small, bubbly child, I've, I've always known I like different things from, you know, from the other boys. I just, you know, snuck into my, my sister's toiletry and there was this eyeshadows that my other cousin used to give to me and, you know, my sister always took them and I just, you know, slammed it under my eyes and it was popping, you know. Went to school that way, got to school. This other teacher, who I won't even mention by name, just, you know, pulled me aside, gave me a hiding and said, you know what, take that off. I went back home crying and my mother went to school and reprimanded her and said, you never ever do that to my child. So that for me was a really great affirming experience that actually made me feel like, you know, embraced, loved, cared for. And my mom said she has always known I was different because most of the time when my dad would be out in the garden, I'd be with her in the kitchen. I've never even had to come out at home. The only time when I really would say it became real was when I started school and you know, um, kids at school could sometimes tease you a bit. Back then, the, the, the popular name that I'd be called would be uh -uh, when I your trasi. And trasi means that you probably have two um, parts. It would be the male part and the female part, you know. And yeah, but it wasn't really as terrible, I'll be honest, because every time even when I'd be teased or somebody would try to bully me, I often befriended them. They would probably just realize that, you know what, it's why tease this person when they still greet me, when they're nice to me. I'm not a drag queen because when you're a drag queen is when you come in and out of costume. My makeup is not overly exaggerated like drag makeup should look. For me, makeup is part of dressing up. I wake up in the morning to do my makeup before I even dress up to leave the house. And that's my everyday routine. How I look even now is me every day. So this is, this is just how I feel. I am, you know, able to take care of myself and I want to look and feel good as how I do now. Being a gay woman in South Africa is sometimes very difficult when I have to, you know, go to town when I have to be at Brie. And we know just how sometimes, you know, those taxi drivers could just be, you know, ignorant. And I'm always cautious of hate crime. I always say I would rather pay rent somewhere expensive or live somewhere where I feel safe and because you can't really compromise on safety or comfortability. My mom and dad's relationship has really modeled to me what love is because my dad provided for my mom 100%. My, my dad adored my mom, still does, you know, they are to each other soulmate. I think all my life I've been trying to find something that at least matches that, you know. But I really feel like now guys want to be pursued and I'm not about that life, honestly. I've not taken hormones, I've not done anything to my voice, I'm not definitely, I'm not growing my boobs and I am, you know, I'm very much comfortable in my own skin. God doesn't make ugly, God would never make a mistake. I definitely don't think I was born into the wrong body. I mean, everything else that I am and who I am is for a reason and we are all unique, we're all different in our own ways. And self-love is the beginning of the truest form of anyone living their grandest life. Mm -hmm.